Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Bracket Dawn. Let's return to the ship. Keep your wits about you. We now have control over the granaries of Yanis. The promise of help given to the Legion Footfall, Vladame Takara, can now be fulfilled, should the Rogue Trader so desire. Seems like an odd dogmatic option. First, I don't like going back on my word. Second, we haven't met Insidia Chorta yet, so why would I as a rogue trader hand over Footfall to her, when we could do the exact same thing? And it's the only option that doesn't provide profit factor. That's so weird. I'm going to select it because I'm going dogmatic, and I'm curious to see how this plays out. Do not send supplies to Footfall, allowing the Righteous and Sedia Chorda to restore Imperial Order on the Lawless Station. Without provisions, Footfall won't be able to resist the will of Incendia Chorda for long, but will quickly succumb to her influence. To welcome the new Rogue Trader, the Adeptus Mechanicus's planetary office brought to the ship an offering of several versatile macro combines. Ancient machines whose carcasses had been found on Yanis and carefully restored. The Sacred Steel Titans will serve the Von Valancius dynasty. Right, we have three projects. Chem Princes. Many planetary aristocrats have stained themselves with incompetence and lost their titles. A new nobility of Chem Princes will be created out of subjects who prove capable in sciences and governance. Those who succeed in wisely managing their agri-complex fiefs quickly maintaining obedience among the commoners and increasing the output of rare organic chemicals will keep their positions. Ultra Inquisitors In the days of the mutiny, many among Yanis's pampered nobility fled the planet. They are to be replaced with more enterprising servants. A small but ambitious Ultra Inquisitor syndicate belonging to the Caspalica mission has contacted the rogue trader with a lowly request to entrust the governance of Yanis to them. With Vladame Takara pushing all of his competitors out of the cold trade, the Ultra Inquisitors are hoping to change their line of business and become dignified aristocrats serving House Von Valancius. Yukari Weapon Tophocracy Yenis is ailing, and who better to cure it than the sage janitors of the Magos biologists? Management of the agri complexes will be taken away from the aristocrats and handed over to the servants of the Omnissiya who will synchronize their operator operations for the benefit of the planet. So definitely not this one. My character doesn't want to deal with cold traders. Besides his romantic interest. I can see the Chem Princes or Sophocracy. So as a prior Commissar, my character knows how important it is to maintain good relations with the Mechanicus. Because without the Mechanicus, the front will fail. So I think this may be the best one. Roleplay wise, maybe not the best in general. Then we we'll go with this. So we get this Apexalium Stimulant. Grants a plus 10 bonus to strength, toughness, and agility, and inflicts a minus 10 penalty to intellect, perception, and willpower for two rounds. Oh, and it gets replenished every... Well, it just says periodically. Cool. And plus one efficiency and times four provisions. And we'll read these once we're done with this first project. All right, real quick, I need to head back to a Trinitos. The tranquility of the warp jump was disturbed by reports of frightening sounds and visions that ascended upon the crew. 
Hundreds of people reported knocking and screaming behind the bulkheads of the void vessel. The sound of nails scratching against the hull, and the elongated Eldari-like shadows thrashing about the long passageways. The phenomena were mostly were most prominent in the far corner of the officer deck where the new Lord Captain's companion, named Erliot, had made her home. The ship left the hostile Immaterium and returned to real space. I think this is the system that had the planet with seven plastew. I didn't write down the values, just where I could find the resources. Fantastic. So I think I'll hold on to the two extractiums that I have left. Alright, this one has Xenotech. I do want to go there because we have this one contract. That'll boost our profit factor by three. Uh, let's go talk to... Early it real quick. Also, it was recommended that I talk to Victus. The Vox Master is looking at you differently. Even the static coming from the Vox Speaker sounds especially loud and nervous today. Look around the bridge. An inexplicable tension has gripped not only Victus, but also seemingly the rest of the officers. They stand frozen, their eyes glued to you. Cassia notices your gaze and hastily turns away breaking back as if trying to disappear. Voxmaster, has something happened? Um, we just had a shipwide broadcast, Lord Captain. What broadcast? There's a shipwide broadcast while you and Mistress Hydari were relaxing. I mean, there was a broadcast of your relaxation activities. I still do not understand. What broadcast? Entire ship heard you carrying on with Mistress Hydari, Lord Captain. We weren't spared any details. The grunts, the moans, the gasps, and all the other non-regulation activities. Is this some kind of bad joke? But he puts a hand to her chest and says compassionately, I would not have dared nor even thought of mocking your lordship in such a shocking manner. I confess, I too was astounded by what was happening. A hysterical giggle comes from the side. Adira is clamping her mouth shut, but she cannot stop herself. Boxmaster, I have a question. Was it sabotage or criminal negligence? It was neither, Lord Captain. The Vox broadcast was initiated from inside your chambers, by someone who was present there. I suppose, if it wasn't you, it must have been Mistress Hydari. I am unauthorized to terminate such broadcasts, except... A treacherous note creeps into Vigdus's voice, resembling a suppressed chuckle. Except in cases where they explicitly jeopardize the safety of the vessel and her crew. And who heard it? Everyone did. The entire vessel. With the exception of Deck 18 Est, the Vox Relay there happened to be out of order at the time. Brevor's nonchalant remark causes someone to choke in a poor attempt to suppress the chuckle. <laughs> So, what did you make of the broadcast? <laughs> Vegas' eyes grow wide. Extraordinary, your lordship. As the father of a rather large family, I can assure you that you have upheld the name of the dynasty, your lordship. <laughs> this feat meets the high expectations placed on the God Emperor's envoy in every sense of the word. Denrock's comment bursts the dam. There is an anarchic uproar on the bridge. Your officers, who are not often exposed to such entertainment, are no longer able to contain the tempest of emotions swirling inside them. 
Remy Jai Haidari. I have a question for her. Her triumphant smile is as good as any confession. Here's the orchestrator of your unwitting performance. Shireen, I'm eager to please. The smuggler's perfectly innocent expression is admirable in its own way. Uh, please tell me, why? Why not? Dai shrugs cheerily. Wouldn't your servants be happy to know that their master spends his leisure time enjoyably? Ah, so that's what the expression on the officer's faces was. Happiness. Yeah, we well should maintain some semblance of order. You do realize that this is not how we do things on my ship. Why? Are you embarrassed? Embarrassed of me, perhaps? You wish to keep secret the passion that is entwined and united our hearts like a verdant vine. I think your servants found it exciting. You might kind of remarkably creative when it comes to describing your passions and strikingly grubby and violent enacting them. You weren't even here for it. Emotional reasons are unnecessary when rational reasons are present. Observations show that the efficiency of the command bridge crew dropped by 9.2 units during the broadcast. And you agree with these two recognized romantic experts, Shireen. But really, why did you do it? Is it some sort of fetish? Jai becomes serious. I want them to know that their master has chosen me, a smuggler and a thief. I want them to know that we spent our nights together. They won't need to whisper behind our backs once they know the truth. I enjoy being your companion and your lover, but I am not some embarrassing secret to be hidden away from so-called decent people. Hope you take no issue with it, Shireen. Nod dryly. Report received, Mistress Hydari. Jai imitates a shudder and feigns fear in her voice. I feel a harsh punishment about to befall me. I beg you to show mercy, Shireen. Endeavor to avoid broadcasting her punishment, whatever it may be. Oh gosh. <laughs> I never do it again. Is that understood? Jai lowers her eyes meekly and coos. I will not make the same mistake twice, Shireen. Indeed, you'll probably come up with something new next time. Aside from this incident, nothing worthy of note occurred during the Watchlord Captain. That was weird. Why did... Oh, she, she walked away. At these words, the feverish excitement gripping the bridge officers begins to slowly dissipate. Have the Vox Spirits brought you anything interesting lately? Alright. Where is our Eldar companion? Elia stands out from her surroundings like a Anusian jungle tree in a garden of manicured to uh, topiary. Unsettling beauty and alluring otherness. And her posture, her gestures, her piercing stare radiate from the Eldari. Strange and blasphemous things started happening during the first warp voyage with you on board. The crew whispering that you may be the reason. Is this true? The minions of She Who Thirsts could sense my soul behind the thick walls and thin veil that separate your fragile lives from the roiling fury outside. The child of Asurian that dare to wander beyond the veil, within the reach of an outstretched claw, protected only by the barrier of unreliable monkey technology. It is too tempting a quarry for the monsters that serve Cylon Thresh. Yeah, I was curious about that. Eldar don't use Geller fields, they navigate via the webway. Which is far safer, most of the time. Because the Geller field could go down for a split second, and then all it takes is that split second for the ship to just be thrown into chaos, for demons to get on board, people to get possessed. Uh, things get really weird and gross. Huh? Nelia juts out her chin, and somehow seems even taller than she actually is. Our ships never venture beyond the Veil. And I... I never traveled the way you do, monkey. 
Elantak. I admit this was a novel experience. I lost composure, let dismay into my heart, and almost strayed from the path. This moment of hesitation drew the attention of she who thirsts. But I summoned my will and used the knowledge of meditation to achieve balance and hide my soul behind an impenetrable wall of resolve. Future journeys beyond the Veil will still be difficult, but I will steal my heart and not let the Hounds of Cylon Thrash pick up my scent ever again. There's a hint of guilt in Eriot's voice. The fall is buzz with rumors about Xenos ravaging the sector. You think it could be your kin from Kruderok? Is that snake venom seeping from your lips? We, the children of Azurian, are no strangers to the art of war. We are not raiders, or butchers, or least of all, fools. When a craft world is beset by calamity, its inhabitants do not start a war with every monkey in the sector. If you are looking for enemies, look for them elsewhere. What happened to your homeworld? It is a mystery as inscrutable as the sigh of the last immortal, as deep as the waters of a dark ocean. And I can tell you little, for I was far away on a mission with my unit. We returned at the appointed hour, but we did not find Kruderok in its celestial harbor. It happened many turns ago, or standard years, as you say. But I remember that moment as if it happened this very day. The memory of a loss is always stronger than the memory of a gain, especially when you lose something as significant as a home or an entire world. We searched, we called out, we looked everywhere, but we saw only emptiness and the echo of an echo of calamity. Countless days passed before I found myself on the Lilithon and met some of my kin. Those refugees who had barely managed to reach our ancestral planet. Their stories were far from being the fruit of truth I so badly craved. Those who agreed to talk to me were few. For most saw me as a wayward daughter who had spurned the honorable paths. And they would not stop babbling about a terrible disease that spread black tendrils of pain over the paths of the Infinity Circuit and deadened our world one segment after another. The ones who survived fled in fear and wandered between the stars until the Lilithon's warm light reached out to some of them. Some, like Muaran, lay the blame entirely on Monkey. However, I do not know the truth, but I hope, oh, I desperately hope and pray to the gods that someday it will be revealed to me. I know this, but we'll ask, uh, what is an infinity circuit? Is idle curiosity a defining feature of the monkey? Or are you trying to learn about the weaknesses of my people so you can destroy another world of the children of Asurion? Forgive me, Ellen Tark, but I am not ready to immerse you in the font of my people's deepest mysteries. Really, it regards you with an inquisitive look. Infinity circuits are where they put the spirit stones of dead Eldari, and they can actually go there and commune with the, the spirits of the past. And you can actually put like spirit stones in uh, certain constructs to power them and things like that as well. They kind of act. I guess they're similar to dreadnoughts in that regard. All Eldari carry these crystals, spirit stones. I want to know what they are. You are talking about something you cannot comprehend, Ellen Tark. Waystones are not mere trinkets worn by my people. They are something greater. From birth until the last breath, the spirit stone belongs only to its owner, serving as an ever-present reminder that we are mortal. For it is the first refuge of the mind, and the last refuge of the soul, which Cylon Thrash is so eager to devour. Gerthea closes her eyes, and her hand inexorably 
excuse me, reaches for the red crystal in her breast. So the Eldar used to be immortal in the sense that they could die, but they would uh, reincarnate. Their soul would go to the warp and they just come back. They can't do that anymore with the birth of, after the birth of Slaanesh. Um, so that's why she says it's a reminder that they're mortal. There's something else I was going to say, but I forgot what it was. Oh, uh, spirit stones aren't common. So Eldar can only have children if they have spirit stones on hand. Well, at least the Eldari specifically, the craft worlders. And they can only be found on crone worlds, where they kind of fall from the sky and they go and they can collect them. But crone worlds are very dangerous because they're located either in the warp or like right on the cusp of the warp. Uh, they're planets that were pulled into the Immaterium. Most, I think all of them during the birth of Slaanesh. I don't know if there's any exceptions where they got pulled into the warp after. But very dangerous to collect. But they are necessary for the continuation of their species. The souls of the children of Asurion move into the stones after death. And then they become a part of the infinity circuit on a craft world. So they can serve their people even when the body is gone. There is no crime more despicable than harming a waystone and dooming the immortal soul of a child of Asurion to an eternity of torment in the maw of she who thirsts. We need waystones as desperately as darkness needs starlight and monkey need air. And so we are bound to wander the galaxy in search of the old worlds that might give another craft world hope for existence. Each monkey's heart is one of your lives. Each waystone is the preserved soul of a child of a Surian. What was your world like before it fell? Kruderak cannot be described in your language. It can only be sung, encased in a filigree of sounds. A melody as complex and delicate as the Infinity Circuit, its energy network. It can be seen in the golden hues of sunlight, felt in the breath of celestial winds. Though it was an artificial world, it was just as alive as any real planet. But I must see clearly, not only light, but also shadows. I yearn to remember only Kruderak's beauty, but it had a dark side too. My world was isolated for too long, like a lake of stagnant water. There was no movement or renewal, and even the sweetest outbursts of life soon turned fetid. Who knows? <sighs> Who knows? Had there been no stagnation? Had our elders not been so blind in their dogmatism and our youths not lacking in courage, then perhaps... Kruderak would still be alive, even now? Really at size heavily. How do your craft worlds even work? Is idle curiosity a defining feature of the monkey? Or are you trying to learn about the weaknesses of my people so you can destroy another world of the children of Asurion? Forgive me, Ellen Tark, but I am not ready to immerse you in the font of my people's deepest mysteries. The response is the Infinity Circuit. Really regards you with an inquisitive look. But what can you tell me about the history of the Eldari? I am afraid your life is too fleeting and your memory too feeble to encompass the entirety of my knowledge. My people ruled the stars when yours did not even have a name. But many of our songs and stories were lost, stolen by she who thirsts. I can tell you the children of Asurion lived, created, caressed the stars as if they were pearls on a string, until Cylon Thresh smothered our empire in her terrifying embrace. Different branches of the Eldari chose different paths to salvation, my ancestors chose an eternal journey through the starry void, living on craft worlds instead of real planets. We rescued countless wonders from the days before, but far from all. You saw this on the Lily Then. Not even we can always master the gates our ancient ones built. 
This is the story of the Asuriani. There are branches that chose a different path, gruesome and frightening. But I do not wish to tell you about them. That is our dark side, just as your kin have many dark sides of their own. Keep mentioning she who thirsts. What can you tell me about her? Why ask this question? Is it idle curiosity or something else? Do not turn your thoughts towards Cylon Thresh, whatever your motive. She is downfall. She is hunger. She is the enemy of all that is good in the universe. She is an enemy to the Aldari. And I hope to you as well. Elliot's eyes grow dark. Elliot stresses the last words, looking at you inquisitively. The Chaos Gods are the enemies of the Imperium, which means they are my enemies. You can be sure of that. We are as different as starlight and its reflection in a muddy puddle. But we share a common enemy. Constancy is our strength. Elliot tilts her head. I have learned what I wanted to know. You have my gratitude. As you wish, Elontark. Let me ask you a few personal questions. What do you wish to talk about? Remind me again. How did you come to be on Yanis? The children of Asurion sought shelter on the Lilithon after the demise of our craft world, our Kruderak. I arrived later, looking for traces of my kin and hoping to learn the fate of my world. They witnessed the baneful ignorance of your breed and began to weave a web of their own intrigues in which I played the role of Vistensa Viat's aid. And then you appeared. Tell me about yourself. Who were you before you came to Yanis? I followed my path. Do you know what a path is to the children of Asurion? It is more than a chosen, what do you call it, craft. The path is how each of us moves through the labyrinth of existence, inside and out, in life and in spirit. It is both a journey and a fortress. It protects us from she who thirsts. To stray from the path is to fall into her dark embrace. Really at almost chance, each word full of sacred meaning. The first path I walked was the path of awakening. It granted me the ability not merely to look, but to see, and to take notice of what I saw. My second path could have been that of a warrior, but I chose differently, for the ability to see called me beyond the boundaries of my home world. Though not everyone was pleased by this decision, I stepped onto the path of the outcast. I gained the freedom to choose, to question, to doubt where the others merely bow before the wisdom of a farseer who dictates the will of destiny. And I will follow my path until I reach its pinnacle. She pauses. What is it like for you being on my ship? It feels like I am in the belly of a bird with steel wings. Cold and unliving, but stubbornly blazing through the dark. It lacks life with its light and beauty, but... Although your vessel cannot even remotely be compared to a craft world, I feel strangely satisfied. We, the Asuriani, are born and dwell on craft worlds. To find myself on a moving world again, even one such as yours, is a source of much joy. I thank you for your answers. The words of truth sound like music. This is what our people say. Tell me about your kin and your homeworld. I refuse to discuss this with a monkey. We are but traveling companions who happen to be following the same road among the stars. Do not even try to get under my skin. It will not work. Really interrupts you with a swift gesture. Am I still unworthy of discussing your world and your kin? Really it nods curtly, saying nothing. But what do you think is happening on Yanis right now? The Lilithon is purifying herself of the corruption brought by the servants of Cylon Thrash. 
gardens and birds, animals and people. Many are gone forever, and even more are corrupted beyond healing. But the Lilithan is stronger. This world will live. My kin are probably still looking for a means to enter the webway. May the Lilithan spirit aid them in this endeavor. Beyond the gate lies salvation, and perhaps even knowledge about the fate of Kruderok and the remaining survivors. Well, why did you agree to join me? Is it not strange for an Eldari to be following a human? The outcasts my path led me to had a saying. Let me translate it for you. If you fall off a cliff, grab the roots and do not ask if they belong to a weed or a noble rosebush. You are the root I grabbed, Elantak, because I fell off a cliff. My home world is gone. My kin are either dead or hiding no one knows where. By joining forces with you, I may be able to nurture a seedling of the truth I so deeply yearn for. For a second, earlier's expressions changes. Things just be singular expression. Uh, she almost grins before continuing in earnest. I must take my leave. Alright, I'm gonna call it here and next time we will I guess carve a path to a new system. Actually, real quick. To what do I owe this visit? Uh, so we can hand over Iliot and Adira to the Inquisitor. Empty. All right, I'm gonna call it here. Next time we will, I guess, head back to. I speak the name of it, Telekos Epsilon, wherever Yannis is at, the Yannis system, and uh, uh, chart more routes. There we go. I know what I'm saying. Whoops, not gonna level up yet. But real quick before I forget, I do want to give. This to her instead. Well, hold on. It can only use Dead Eye Shot, right? It only costs one AP, though. Because early it will not be a mainstay in my A team. Oh. Only pull her out for her quests. All right, I'm gonna call it here. Next time we have exploring to do. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.